Hey guys, and welcome to this week's episode of the Budding Watch Enthusiast. So we're going to start with my wristwatch check today, which is my Stratton Synchro Chronograph, because this is the watch that we're going to be talking about today. I've had this watch now for a little over six months, so as is customary on the channel, um, I'm going to do my, my six-month look back at the watch, uh, see how I feel about the watch now, if my initial review still holds up uh, as far as my thoughts and opinions on the watch, and to tell you what I like and dislike about this guy real quick. A quick apology before we get started. I know I didn't put out a video last week. Uh, that is because on the day that I was going to film this review uh, was the day that the East Coast got that big snowfall for the first time, and then uh, we discovered that night that we had a small leak in our roof. So <laughs> that obviously took a little bit of precedent and a little bit of priority. Uh, everything's good though, uh, no major issues there, uh, but that is why you didn't get an episode last week. So apologies there, uh, but like I said, now we're gonna be talking about the Synchro. So guys, if you have not seen my full review on the Stratton Synchro, I will leave a link in the description below as well as put a card right here. But just as a quick refresher on the watch, the Stratton Synchro is a racing style chronograph uh, from very heavily inspired by 70s style racing chronographs. Uh, it is from the Stratton Watch Company. A 44 millimeter watch is the one that I have. It also comes in a 40 millimeter size as well. Uh, notable, of course, this has the Seiko VK64 Mecha Quartz movement inside of it. And if you don't know what the Mecha Quartz is, it is a quartz movement with a mechanical chronograph module attached to it. So while the regular timekeeping behaves like a quartz watch, the chronograph function of the watch behaves like a mechanical chronograph, sort of a best of both worlds sort of endeavor, uh, but it does certainly help bring the price down compared to traditional mechanical chronograph movements. So one of the things I talked about in my full review is that this the Synchro is a very fun watch. It's super colorful, it's definitely a sporty watch, definitely not something you're gonna be wearing uh, with a suit and tie at any given point for sure. Uh, that still remains true today. It's still one of the most uh, pleasing watches to look at, uh, one of the most vibrant watches that I have in my collection from an aesthetic standpoint. Uh, one of the things that I've really enjoyed doing with this watch is pairing it with, uh, dressing it up basically, pairing it with different straps. Um, you see it here on the leather strap. This is what it comes with. In my review, I also featured it on a mesh strap as well. But this watch also pairs with an incredible number of NATOs. Because there's so many different colors in the watch with the blue, the orange, silver, of course, some white, it can really, you know, kind of spread the spectrum of different colors that you can pair with this as far as NATO straps. And it is fun trying out different looks and it usually works pretty well uh, with most things that you try it on. However, that being said, the one of the biggest drawbacks that I found with this watch through these first several months of owning it is it feels weird wearing it with anything other than like a t-shirt and jeans. Um, even like business casual, you see him wearing a button down shirt. It doesn't quite look right to me um, with this kind of dress. I'd, I'd wear business casual for my job. That's my, that's my general attire pretty much every day. I find that I'm not wearing the Synchro all that often just because like I said, it just doesn't look right with a little bit more formality. Part of that's because the watch is very large and bulky. Um, some of that is because it has, it, it screams sports aesthetic, which just doesn't quite look right, I think, with it. But yeah, unfortunately, as much as I was wearing this watch when I first got it, and I was, I was wearing it a ton uh, when I first picked this watch up, I honestly haven't been wearing it as often frequently, just because again, I find it difficult to pair uh, with anything outside of a very casual look. So this is not a watch that gets worn to work very often. Uh, this is a watch that I wear more often like on the weekends and stuff like that. So that's a bit of a bummer. Um, I like watches personally that are a little bit more versatile in their style that lets you pair it with different stuff. And look, you can wear any watch with anything you want to. Um, it's all personal opinion and personal taste in that regard. But for me, this just doesn't cut it uh, when I'm doing anything other than, than being super casual. So let's talk about the thing that I also really loved about this watch when I picked it up, and that is the Seiko VK64 Mecha Quartz movement. I, I effuse praise on this movement when I originally read this watch, and my appreciation in daily use has only grown for that movement. I absolutely positively love it. I think it's spectacular. Um, again, you get the convenience of a quartz movement, not having to wind the watch all the time, not having to set it all the time, but you get that combined with the mechanical chronograph module. And because the Stratton Synchro 
does not have the third subdial with the running seconds hand on it, you even forget that this is a quartz movement because you're not seeing the watch ticking away. And I really love it. Again, it's it's super convenient. It's it's one of my favorite movements out there. Obviously, it doesn't have quite the you know the charm or the allure of getting a fully automatic uh, chronograph movement. But when you're paying a fraction of the price as those watches tend to go for, I think it's a pretty fair trade-off. I love Mecha Quartz movements and getting to experience this watch and use this watch uh, regularly has only deepened my appreciation uh, for Mecha Quartz. I know some of you guys out there don't care for any Quartz movements whatsoever. That's fine. I know some folks out there uh, have complained with the VK64 specifically, the 24 hour subdial uh, is sort of useless, which I don't disagree with, uh, but at the same time, I'd rather have that than to see a running seconds uh, that I don't particularly care to see personally. I will say the only major drawback with the movement though is the fact that you can only do up to an hour of chronograph time. Now that's a super niche and, and, and something that's not gonna affect the majority of people most of the time. Um, and again, I've not really found any occasions to do it, but if you were planning on getting this thing and using the chronograph feature regularly, just do be aware that it does cap out at one hour. So if you ever plan on timing something for longer than an hour, then obviously this is not gonna be a useful watch for that. But again, if you probably are gonna time something for more than an hour anyway, you're probably gonna be using a digital watch regardless, I would think. So the Stratton Synchro is still fun. It's still super high quality. And it's still a watch that I think is worth the $499 price tag that is put on it. That being said, it's hard. I, I, I was, I effusively recommended this watch back when I reviewed it. It's a little bit harder to recommend as enthusiastically now. And the reason for that, unfortunately, has nothing to do with the Synchro, but it actually has to do with how the market has changed around the Stratton Synchro. So when I purchased the Stratton Synchro way back in April, um, Mecha Quartz chronographs were kind of around that $500 price range. There wasn't a lot of variance in the marketplace. There were other watches that used the Mecha Quartz movement, um, but they were more traditional style chronographs or military style chronographs. Uh, take the Hemel HFT20, for example, as a good example of a military style one that's out there. So again, all the racing style ones were kind of in that price range, um, even the ones from like Autodromo, for example, uh, are even more expensive than this as well. So this was a really good bargain, I thought, at the time. Well, fast forward six months and the marketplace has changed a little bit. And the biggest watch that has kind of upset the balance of that is the Dan Henry 1964 Gran Turismo. Now I will grant you the, the Dan Henry is obviously not the same type of watch. This is, the Synchro is a combination dive watch and chronograph, whereas the Dan Henry is a traditional uh, racing style chronograph watch. And I'll also grant you that the Synchro from a material standpoint, from a quality standpoint, is heads and tails above the Dan Henry. And you can tell, if, like if you were to hold them both in your hands, the Synchro is definitely gonna be the better quality watch. But that being said, the 1964 is a super popular aesthetic. Uh, it has the VK64 Mecha Quartz movement in, the same exact movement, but it comes in at half of the price. And that is a very tempting option out there if you're looking for a retro style chronograph uh, and you were looking for that Mecha Quartz movement. That's a huge, that's a huge thing. I don't think that can be understated. And again, that doesn't say anything bad about the Synchro because the Synchro, again, is still a super high quality watch but it's just very tough to recommend it unequivocally when that option is out there. Stratton Watch Company themselves have a new watch coming out called the Legera, which is a, again, retro style chronograph. It looks very similar to the Synchro, but I think to me, it kind of looks like the, the version 2.0 of the Synchro watch. It looks like the, you know, that Stratton, you know, learned what really worked with the Synchro and improved the parts that didn't. And if you're asking me, hey, should I buy a watch from Stratton Watch Company? I would actually wait for this, for the Legera and pick that one up instead. They also have a bullhead model coming out if you're into that as well, which is pretty much the same watch, just with the pushers and, and crown up at the top of the watch. The Stratton Synchro is still an excellent watch. It's still one that's definitely worth picking up if you like this and are interested in it. But just know that the Legera is coming and maybe help that way into your decision as well. Stratton also usually does a great deal with pre-order pricing. You can get the watch for a lot less if you pre-order it. 
than you can if you buy it once the watch is already released. So that means the Laguerre is gonna clock in even cheaper than the Synchro in as well. See, I haven't decided what I'm gonna do with this watch yet. I, I may still end up selling it on. Um, I may end up keeping it. Again, every time I wear it, I, I really love it. I really enjoy it. But then, like I said, it sits, and I know there's some other stuff out there uh, that's very similar that I might be interested in. Still a fantastic watch, though. I, I always worry that with the six-month reviews that I tend to come off more negative uh, than, I, than I think that I might be. It's still a fantastic watch, still a lot of fun. But yeah, it's just, it's just tough because there's more stuff in the market now um, that I think kind of does what this watch does, at least from, a, from an aesthetic standpoint. So it's just more options out there. So that is my six month thoughts uh, with the Stratton Synchro. I thank you guys very much for watching this video. Uh, if you found this entertaining or informative, do me a favor and hit that like button down below. Uh, also subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet, click the red subscribe button and ring the bell icon. That way you never miss a new episode that I post. And of course I'm on Instagram as well. All you have to do is search out at budding watch enthusiasts and you can follow me there as well. Again, thank you guys very much for watching. I will see you all the next time.